Welcome to the Airport Safety Channel. It is a privilege to have you all join me this week, and I believe that we are going to learn new things. I am your host, Isaac Otu, and it's once again my honor to have you on this channel. We are still dealing with how well do you know your facility and I am taking opportunity of this subject to take us through the Annex 14. So we'll be looking at parts of a runway. We have been on this series for a time now and now we are looking at the aerodrome reference code. Today our topic will be on the aerodrome reference code. Our focus will be to go through the Annex 14, Volume 1, Aerodromes, Edition 9, Chapter 3. We will be using this document as our main reference document. I hope you enjoy as we go through the Annex 14. Today, let's look at what we did in the previous week. And at this point, I'd like to encourage you if you have not watched the previous videos, kindly go back, run through them, and come and continue once you are done. In the previous week, we learned about determining the width of runways, the width of runways. And we observed that determining the width of runways depends on the outer main gear wheel span of the aircraft that we intend to use the runway. So depending on the size of the outer main gear wheel span, the runway width is determined. Once again, take some time to listen to the previous presentation. Today we are focusing on the aerodrome reference code, and this can be seen in Annex 14, Chapter 1, Section 6. Annex 14, Chapter 1, Section 6, Aerodrome Reference Code. So it is defined as an, a code number and letter. The aerodrome reference code is defined as a code number and letter, which is selected for aerodrome planning purposes and shall be determined in accordance with the characteristics of the aeroplane for which an aerodrome is intended. The aerodrome reference code consists of a code number and a letter. So if you are asked for the aerodrome reference code of your airport, your answer should consist of a number and an alphabet or a letter. How do we determine this number and letters? It is done by considering the aircraft or aeroplane for which the aerodrome was intended to receive. That is, when the aerodrome was being built, an aircraft was used to plan the facilities of your airport. So, you must know that aeroplane or that aircraft and based on the characteristics of that aircraft, you will have a fair idea of why your airport was built the way it is. If you are helping or on a team that is planning or working towards the building of a new aerodrome, then your first consideration must be to ask yourself what type, size, or capacity of aircraft are we building the, air, uh, the air, uh, aer, uh, aerodrome for? So if we are going to build for a Boeing 737, then we must consider the characteristics of the Boeing 737 and be able to identify our code number and letter. We will go deeper into understanding the code numbers and letters. The number we are going to call code element one 
and the letters we are going to call code element 2. So the Eldom reference code numbers and letters shall have meanings assigned to them. We'll look at these meanings in the following slides. So we are looking at code element 1. Code element 1. That is the numbers. The code number for element 1 shall be determined from the table 1.1 below by selecting the code number corresponding to the highest value of the aeroplane reference field length of the aeroplanes for which the runway is intended. Every aeroplane has a minimum runway length that can support its landing and its takeoff. A minimum runway length that can support its landing and takeoff. The minimum runway length required in uh, Egypt may not be the same minimum runway length required in South Africa. They have different conditions and it has a direct impact on the runway length required for an aircraft, the same aircraft, to land. Therefore, once we consider the characteristics, you will know that for a Boeing 737, it needs not less than 1,200 runway length to land. If you are looking at the Learjet, it may need something less than 1,200 to land. So we consider these things and determine the runway length required. The runway length in this case is called the aeroplane reference field length. The aeroplane reference field length. So if I can tell the uh, runway length required for a, um, a Boeing 777 or an Airbus 340 or a Bombardier to land, then I will be able to say that I know the aeroplane reference field length for this particular aeroplane and then using this table on your screen, I can tell what number applies to my aerodrome. So for code number one, it refers to aeroplane reference field length or runways with length less than 800 meters. Less than 800 meters. So if you have an airstrip or a small aerodrome where the runway length is less than 800 meters, the code number for that aerodrome or that runway is one, one, one. If the code number is two, then it means that the runway ranges between 800 but less than 1,200 meters less than 1200 meters then that particular runway code is 2 if the runway field length or the aeroplane reference field length is between 1200 meters and 1800 meters then the code number is 3 if the runway is longer than 1,800 meters, that is from 1,800 to any other number, 5,000 meters or 6,000 meters or 4,000 meters or 3,000 meters, that runway code number is 4. That runway code number is 4. Now, one thing that you should remember is that the code number does not specifically give a figure of length to the runway. It only tells the minimum length that can be uh, provided, minimum, for a particular aeroplane. So the determination of the aeroplane reference field length is solely for the selection of a code number and it's not intended to influence the actual runway length provided. So in my airport, 
if I determine the European reference field length using the biggest aircraft that operates in my airport, it doesn't mean that my runway should be exactly that figure. It means that at least my runway can take that type of aircraft. So my runway length is provided based on other factors. There are many other factors that also goes into determining the runway length. So those factors must be looked at to ensure safety of aircraft operation. To ensure safety of aircraft operation. So your runway is 3,000 or 2,000 or 4,000 because of all the safety parameters. Yet, it is code 4. It could be less than 1,800 and be code 3. And the aircraft that you receive use that runway because their aeroplane reference for length is less than what you provided. So they have enough space to land and take off and also recover in an emergency. These things are important to be considered. So when it comes to the code element one, we base it solely on the length of runway available solely on the length of runway available. Now let's look at the code two. Code element two shall be determined by selecting the code letter which correspond to the greatest wing span of the aeroplanes for which the facility is intended. So if you measure the wing of the aircraft that for which you are intending to build the uh, aer aerodrome. If you me measure the wingspan from one end to the other, you take that measurement and compare it to the table on your screen. If the measurement falls below 50 meters, then that aircraft is code A. It means that your aerodrome is designed for code A aircrafts. If the wingspan is above 50 meters but below 24 meters, then it is code B. If that is the biggest aircraft you are taking in your aerodrome, it means your aerodrome was designed for code B operations. If it is code C, then it means your the aircraft you are receiving has wingspans above 24 meters but below 36 meters then you are operating code C. If your aircraft or the mix of aircrafts that comes to your airport has a maximum wingspan less than 52 meters, maximum wingspan less than 52 meters, then you are operating up to a code D. If the wingspan of your aircraft mix is below 65 meters, then you are operating up to a code E. And if the wingspans are below 80 meters, then you are operating up to a code F. Now, you can see that there is a limit to the wingspan on your screen. Unlike the runway length that ranges from 8,800 above as code 4, for the wingspan, there is a limit, and this is impacted due to the fact that aircraft constructions are still ongoing, and there are some aircraft with even wider wingspans. But IKEA is working to ensure that the wingspans of aircraft are limited in order not to affect aerodrome facilities too much. How do you measure the so if you look on your screen, you can see the measurement for the wingspan of an aircraft. So the wingspan is measured from the tip of the one wing to the tip of the other wing. That is how we measure the wingspan of the aircraft. And this information can also be found in the technical specification of the aircraft that you are planning for.
Let's see some pictures of actual aircrafts and their wingspans. So for the code A, which is up to but not including 50 meters, you have aircrafts like the Learjet 55. Learjet 55, it is a code A because the wingspan is less than 50 meters. Now, if you look at this aircraft carefully, you see that the tips of the wings have what you call winglets. Winglets. These winglets are tipped upwards. So you don't expand them to measure them. No. You measure them as they are, as being the edge of the wing and take the measurement from tip to tip without extending the winglets. The winglets are not extendable. For a code B, which for which the wingspan is from 15 meter up to, but not including 24 meter, an example is the Fokker 2.8, 2000 model. The entire wing span is below 24 meters. So this is a code B aircraft, a code B aircraft. For a code C aircraft, for which the wingspan is between 24 meters up to but not including 36 meters, we have aircraft such as the Airbus 320, Airbus 320, for which the wingspan is 34, 34 meters. If you look at the Boeing 737 MAX, the wingspan is 35.9 meters. It is just a single 0.1 meter shy of the 36 meter mark. So it falls in the code C category. Others like the Boeing 737-400, the ATR-42-500 series, they all fall under code C operations. They are all in the code C operations. So if you know your code element one, which is uh, code one, two, three, or four, and you know your code element two, which is the Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, Delta, Echo, Foxtrot, then you can join these codes together and you know that you have a code 3C or a code 4C or a code uh, 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 yes, to be for your aerodrome. In this case, the Boeing 737 MAX, you could have a code 4C operations if the Boeing 737 is your maximum aircraft operating in your airport. Now for code D, for code D, the wingspan is 36 meters up to but not including 52 meters. That is good D. And for that, you will see aircraft like the Boeing 767 or the Airbus A300 falling into this category. They fall into this category. They are in code D. If you look at other codes, such as the code E, we have 52 meter, but not including 65 meter wingspan. And for that, we have the Boeing 777, Standard range 747 also falling into this category. The Airbus A350 800 series also falls into this category. So you, it is important that you have a fair idea of the biggest aircraft that you are receiving and you'll be able to pick up the code. And when we get to code F, you have 65 meter up to but not including 80 meters up to but not including 80 meters so the a380 falls into this category the boeing 7478 also falls into this category now i have in the middle antonov 225 antonov 225 the wingspan is 88.4 meters 88.4 meters. This is bigger than the 80 meter uh, 
a, a range provided for the code F. So where do you place this kind of aircraft? It means whenever you are receiving this aircraft, you must conduct a risk assessment and determine that there is enough space for the wingspan whenever it is arriving in your airport. Like I always say, do not forget to subscribe, like, share, and click the bell. Yes, subscribe, like, and share this channel with your friends and colleagues. It's very important that we raise the numbers and share this knowledge. Don't keep it to yourself. This is free knowledge and it is good to share. Now, what do you think of the what I kill code that this aircraft belong to? This is the Boeing 777X. As usual, go to the comments and write what category or what code element this aircraft belongs to. You can search for the wingspan length and write it in the comment box and determine which code element belongs to this aircraft. Okay, so once it's time for inspections, what do you look out for? The impact of the wingspan is that it affects the runway, taxiway, and apron safety. I mentioned that uh, for the Antonov, you need to conduct a risk assessment before you can determine whether your airport can receive it or not. So if you have your minimums being declared as the standard uh, safety areas that you have provided, this aircraft will break that safety area boundary and can cause wingtip collision and many other serious uh, aerodrome safety issues. So the wingspan leads to reviewing your runway, taxiway, and apron safety requirements. The wingspan impacts on the minimum separation between runway and taxiways. So the separation between your runway and your taxiway was determined based on the wingspans of aircraft that you are receiving. The wingspan determines the separation between taxiway and another taxiway. So if you have two parallel taxiways, the distance is determined based on the wingspans of aircraft operating in your aerodrome. If you have aircraft with bigger wingspans using your aerodrome, then you have to conduct risk assessment as soon as possible. The wingspan determines the separation between aircraft stands. The distance between two aircraft stands is determined based on the wingspan of aircraft. The wingspan impacts the separation between aircraft and objects. So if you have an object in your aerodrome like a wind direction indicator or uh, a high mast, a high mast light pole, the distance between those objects and the stands or the taxiways is determined using the wingspan of aircraft. The wingspan is always referenced when planning for fueling and other services on the apron. The wingspan has an impact on where your fueling will also be. It is very important to look at all these things when you are conducting inspections. Now the wingspan separates the shoulder of your taxiway from the apron and it's very important to also look at the distance between two aircraft wings and ensure that the minimum separations have been achieved. While the aircraft is on the taxiway, the distance between the taxiway center line and the safety margin of your apron is determined by the wingspan. It is very important to ensure that your aircraft operating in your aerodrome are safe.
As we bring this presentation to a close, I'd like to give you the bullet for the day. And it's step out. The bullet for the day is step out. ICO standards provides you with the minimum requirements. Stepping out will maximize your professional opportunities. Opportunities to learn, opportunities to expand on your capacity, opportunities to discover new things, opportunities to be able to apply your knowledge on the field. So I encourage you to step out, move out from your comfort zone, move out from your office and get onto the field and you will learn a lot more. That is the bullet for this week. Once again, I'd like to say thank you for watching. Post your comments and questions. Subscribe and click the bell. Share with one and all. See you in the coming week.